Good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving Day Eve. I'm glad that you're able to join me this morning. Let me bring my iPad up so I can watch comments as they come in. Turn my volume down because I don't want to hear myself. Okay. I'm just going to give a moment or so for everybody to get on board here this morning. I know everybody's busy this week. Um, let me just give it a, a minute or so. Hope everybody's doing well today and you're not working too hard getting that turkey dinner going for tomorrow. Um, I haven't even started mine yet, so that's going to be my project this afternoon. Okay. Um... It's nice and sunshiny this morning. It's wanting to cloud up, but we've got some rays of sunshine coming through occasionally, so maybe it won't be too bad of a day. So much for the weather report. As I said, be sure you say hello when you come on so I make sure that I recognize you and I can say hello to you. Facebook. How do I do that? It says I can, but it's not doing anything. Hmm. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here and everybody can catch up as they come on. I'm just going to go through some housekeeping notes right now. Let me bring my light over here a little bit. And I'll go ahead and turn you around here while we're doing that. So if you get ocean sickness, close your eyes until I get you turned around here. I wish there were a simpler way to do this, but um, I'm not equipped like a lot of people are with the fancy stuff, the switchers and all that stuff. So we'll make do with what we got. Okay, let me make sure it's looking good on the screen here before I continue. And it's kind of crooked, let me see. Thinking we can maybe zoom just a little bit. This way, I think. Every time I move my tripod, my phone shuts off on me. Gives me a weird message. Like I said, be sure you comment when you come on and um, so I know that you're here. And I'm trying to figure out which way to go here. Be about there. Let's see how that looks, and we might just go ahead and get started. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. So I want to welcome everybody to my Facebook Live this morning. My name is Debbie Foster. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States, and I'm located in Bismarck, Arkansas. I want to welcome you to my Facebook Live this morning. Uh, like I said, be sure you comment. I'm not seeing any of my comments for some reason. I don't really know why. Um, okay. Well, there we go. Okay. Good morning, Becky. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, too. Um, from Pennsylvania. Okay. And hi, Diane. Glad you're here. I didn't know if I'd have very many this morning being Thanksgiving Day Eve where everybody's busy baking and cooking and all that sort of stuff. 
I hadn't even started mine yet, so I'm going to be doing all mine this afternoon, and tomorrow morning we'll get the turkey going. But, like I said, I'm creating cards with Debbie, and you can shop in my online store for any products that I'm showing today, or anything that you might be needing, which is www.debbiefoster.stampinup.net. And if you have any questions on anything today, or in general, just... Email me at creatingwithdebbie179 at gmail.com. And here's my blog address and how to sign up for Paper Pumpkin there, too. I think you can see that okay. I won't read it out loud because it kind of gets confusing. All right. Um, oh, and the November host code is still good, and that's 9PSNM43K. And that's also in the description of the video, in case you miss it. Okay, um, let me go with this. Um, Stampin' Up! is doing a one-time thing where they've never done before with the starter kits. You can um, get your starter kit, kit for $75, and you get to choose um, $125 worth of products free. Well, it won't be free, but it, the $125 worth of value is only going to cost you $75, so you're getting $50 of product free. And we're running that until um, November 30th, so um, that's a very good promotion going on right now. So um, if you have an order that's $75, um, this would be the way to go, and then you'll get that extra $50 in products along with it, so um, that's free shipping, and but you pay your sales tax, so I'm kind of fumbling with my words here, I don't know, um, and after you sign up, you'll get a um, everyday discount of 20% off of your next orders that you make. And I'd love to have you on my team. We have lots of fun. Um, it's not only me, but you get um, my uplines that are uh, very good and they're very helpful. So you get extra benefits along with that. But if you have any questions, be sure that you email me or private message me. Okay, so the paper pumpkin for December is called Lots of Pun. And... It says it is, uh, this, que this cute and quirky kit includes enough exciting elements to create nine cards and coordinating envelopes. An exclusive stamp set packed with playful puns add a little lightheartedness and humor to any paper project you stamp with the set. Completely customizable characters for a very versatile creative experience. Match each die cut snack to its coordinating stamp. Then mix up the faces and accessories for an absolutely adorable accent. One-of-a-kind patterns and designs, from giddy gingham to splatters and stripes. December's delightful kit features a fun, fresh look. And here's another illustration of it. And you have until December 10th to sign up for the paper pumpkin kit for December. Yeah, it looks like a really cute one. All right, I'm just kind of setting my things aside here out of the way. And I think that's all of the housekeeping notes that we have this morning. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's all. I can't think of anything else. So let's go ahead and get started here. I want to start with our... Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of embossing here this morning. Let me get these. Uh, we're going to do some embossing and some die cutting. And this is the card that we're going to be doing. It's called Wishing You the Best. Oops, I got fumble fingers here. And may you enjoy the peace of this beautiful season. So we're embossing all of this. It's going to be silver embossed. And then. Um, we're going to put some snowflakes that are embossed in here, and then we're going to emboss the sentiment. So, uh, we've got a little bit of work to do there. But it'll come together fairly quick, I think. Let me set this aside. And we're using the Peaceful Cabin 
stamp set and then also the cabin dies that go along with this and these can be bought as a bundle so that'll save you 10 percent and if you put this on your starter kit you'll be getting it um well no that wouldn't go to your next order never mind i'm getting ahead of myself all right so let's get down to concentrating on this so this is some of the paper that's in there and where did I put that okay. here's the designer series paper that we're going to be using and it's called peaceful place and we're going to be using uh, this one right here it doesn't really show it really good so I'm going to show you the full page and with this one you can cut it in sections four different card fronts to use and then here's the other side. It has the little trees. And we're going to be using one of these. And I've cut it down to my card size. Let me set that aside. Set that aside. And I'm going to bring in a little bit of scratch paper here because we're going to be using our embossing powder and it could get a little messy. Let me get my bits and pieces out here. Get rid of all the crinkling here going on. Okay, so we're starting out with our basic black cardstock is going to be our base of our card. And that measures four and a fourth inches by eleven inches, and then it's scored in the middle at five and a half inches. And we're going to burnish that edge of that to get a good fold on it. And we're going to be using it this way, uh, it'll open like this. Alright, and then we've got a, that designer series paper, and I've cut that down to size, which is 4 inches by 5 and a fourth inches. And this is the back side. So we're going to be doing our embossing on there. So let's go ahead and bring our elements here. We're going to use this, we're going to use the sentiment. So we're using Wishing You the Best and then our snowflakes are going to be what we're going to emboss on that. And I've got my Versamark ink. And let's go with the sentiment first. We're going to put that down in the bottom corner. I just want to make sure it's inked up really good. And All right, and then we're going to do our snowflakes at the same time. And we're just going to put them here and there. And it's kind of hard to see. Um, I'll make sure I don't put them on top of each other. Let me turn this one. And I'm not putting them all the same direction because I don't want them to be all alike here. And maybe a couple down here. And maybe lift it up so I can see it in the light. See if we missed any. Um, I think that's good. So we'll close up our Bossing powder. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do the inside at the same time. Well, no, we'll come back and do that. I don't want to get mixed up here. So I'm going to be using silver embossing powder. And I always put mine in little containers. It makes it easier to work with. And let me get this over here in the camera view. We're just going to pour that all in there. come back in and tap it off a little bit in the excess. Uh oh, I might have a problem on that one. Okay, let me see if I got them all. tap off and I think I've got a problem with that I don't know 
Uh, let me come back in with a brush and see if I can't clean this up a little bit. I'm probably going to wreck it. No, that's not working. So let's take that back off. And I may have to... Let me see if I can stamp back over that and match it up right. I don't know. I may have to um, just stamp it on another paper and then put it on there. I don't know. Let's try this again and see. Go ahead and emboss it and see what it looks like. We may have to change this up a little bit. And my heat gun over here. And like I said before, I still got my old generic embossing gun, heat and heat tool. So until that goes out on me, I'll be using this. And when it goes bad on me, then I'll get a new one. It's stamping it. We're stamping up Perry's one. It's in the back of the book. And I don't think I like that. You may have to do something different. So you want to make sure you hold it there long enough for it to change color. If you're not familiar with embossing, heat embossing, you'll see it kind of changes color. And that means that it's done. So you don't want to hold it any longer than that because it'll burn the embossing powder. And we don't want that to happen. Um, okay. Alright, got that done. Uh, well, I'm not really liking that. I think we're going to do something different. Hmm. Uh, I have a scrap of paper. Um, hmm. Oh, hold on a second. I need to grab some paper. We're going to do something different here. piece of our black cardstock and we're going to try embossing on that and see what it looks like. See if we can't fix this up. So we're going to do it right about there. Make sure I've got good coverage. I think I'm lighting over here better. Yeah, I think I'll do that again. on the embossing pad versus mark and bring our embossing powder back over I'm just tapping off the excess here Some flicks here. I want to get rid of before we emboss it. Okay. Let's try 
try this again. I think heat in Boston is kind of relaxed and it's kind of fun to watch it change colors. I don't know. That amazes me how that works. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to use our double oval punch and we're going to um, punch that out. And I think I'll trim this down and use the scalloped edge. Just want to probably get it into the side of the punch. And I think I'm going to use the small oval. It punches out two at a time, but I want the smaller one. And I think that'll work to place that down there. Yeah, I'm okay with that. It's one thing about crafting, and there's usually a way to fix things, so uh, if you mess up on something, don't stress out because it can be fixed usually. Alright, so first off, we're going to put our ribbon, and this is our black organy glitter ribbon, which is in the catalog, the annual catalog, and we're going to place that along the top, and I want to get my stamp and seal out here, we're going to use that to attach it in the back. that there for now. We're going to put this along the top. We're going to turn it around and just put our stamp and seal to hold it in the back. And there we go. Was it rolling right? And I'm just going to stick that down. And of course it sticks to the fingers and all. And I want to turn it over to make sure I've got it straight before I attach the other side. And it looks pretty good there. Alright, so now we can glue this down to our card front. I'm using my Tombow liquid glue. That's the glue of my choice. And place this on our card front. I'm not putting another mat underneath it because the black kind of um, makes it pop a little bit, so I like that look. And make sure it's gluing down good. Alright. Let me move this paper out of the way. It's got embossing powder on it. Alright. And I'm going to wait with this because we're going to do our cabin. And I just got the cabin stamp. And we're going to be using our black memento ink. And I'm going to pick this up and stamp it. It's being on some larger stamp. I'm not seeing comments very well. I don't know. Um, I don't know where my comments went. I lost my comments. If you have a question or anything, you can ask me in the comments, and I'll check my comments later. Um, I don't know what's going on. I can't see them. There they are. Okay. So there we have our cabin. We put the lid on the ink pad. And we're going to bring our baby boss in because she's going to do some work here. <laughs> My dog just snored over there. I don't know if you could hear her on camera. 
She's taking a nap on the couch within my room here. All right, so we've got, this is the little die that cuts out the cabin. Lay it down here to get it centered. Um, okay, I'm going to take a little piece of washi tape to hold that in place. And we'll run that through our little girl here. You can find this uh, mini Stampin' Emboss machine in uh, my store if you don't have a die cutting machine. This is the little one. We've also got the bigger one. But I like the little one because she's real handy on my desk like this. Where you don't have to drag out the big embossing or die cutting machines. And I am using my magnetic dish for my dies here, so I kind of keep up with them that way. Uh, so I'm just going to fussy cut the rest of this out, which is really simple to do. I'm just going to follow along the lines. And I'll leave a little white border going around it. I don't cut exactly on the stamped image. Real simple to do. And I'm going to place this up on dimensionals. And so, does everybody have a family at their house, or are you going somewhere else for Thanksgiving? those backings in the dimensionals. Makes it easier when you don't have fingernails. Now oh, got one more there. Let go. There we go. And we're stuck to the fingers. Okay, so we're going to place our cabin. right about there. Let me make sure that we don't run into a problem here. We're okay there. Maybe scooch it over and up a little bit. Alright, and then we've got our fence, which I need to die cut. I've already stamped that using our stamp for the fence. I've already done that, so we're going to go ahead and die cut that out. We've got to bring Baby Boss over here one more time. out. Alright, I'm going to use my washi tape to hold that in place. She's squeaking a little bit this morning. fence. I'll move her over here out of the way. And I didn't place a fence up on dimensionals. I'm just going to glue it directly down to our card front. And we're going to place it at the edge, but underneath the tree a little bit. Debating if I want to put that up on dimensionals. I think I'll put that on dimensionals also. And we'll just put two on there, one on each side. And take your pick tool because I can't get them off of my fingernails. And we're just going to place that right over that other one that I messed up. 
And where's the ribbonette that I had? Goodness, things are disappearing already. I had a ribbon here. Where am I? Did I fall on the floor? Huh. I had a new little ribbon there to tie a bow. I'm not finding it now. So let me Oops. grab the ribbon again and cut off a piece. That's where it went. I just had it. But all is well. I got some more here. I'll find it when I don't want to. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to tie a faux bow at the top here. And I just cut off a little piece of ribbon, just enough to tie it around the other ribbon. And I want to twist it a little bit to get the sparkly on the right side. Okay, just like that. That doesn't look bad. And I'm going to get my Wink of Stella, and I'm going to... Put a little sparkle on that snow on top of the roof. And okay. Okay, so there's the front. Let's go ahead and work on the inside. And we've got our basic weight, which measures four inches by five and a fourth inches. And we're gonna do some embossing on the inside also. We're gonna use the sentiment. May you enjoy peace of this beautiful season. And then we've got the trees we're going to put at the bottom. So let me bring that paper back over here to do our embossing. I hope you all don't get too bored with me. Um, sometimes I kind of stumble with my words, I guess. <laughs> I guess the mouth don't know what the brain's doing or something. I don't know. So we're going to use our first mark ink and we're going to stamp our sentiment in the center. And then we're going to also emboss just these two trees. And we're going to stamp them down in the bottom corner, bottom right corner. Okay, put our lid on there, bring our embossing powder back, and I think I'm going to use the little spoon to do this one. that I knocked on the floor. And let the magic begin. Sometimes it takes a little while for the heat gun to heat up and that to start melting it, so um, there it goes. my paper I'm going to turn it over and do a little bit of heat on the back side and that helps straighten out the paper again. Kind of, it kind of curls when you're heating it. So here we have that. And we're going to go ahead and glue that to the inside of our card and let me get this out of the way. And using my liquid glue again. We're going to put some on the back side of this and attach it to the inside of our card. And I want to make sure I'm right side up because I have put it upside down before. Has anybody ever done that? Mm -hmm. 
or else I'll put it on the wrong side. I'll put over here sometimes, not realizing. Thanks, Diane. That's a good tip, Becky. Yes, makes sense. Okay, so here's our card. Wishing you the best. I love this cabin, the peaceful cabin. It could be for a man's card or it could be a Christmas card. Um, and then our inside sentiment. I love the embossing effect. Okay, so we're going to clean up here a little bit and we'll get to our next card. Set these aside. Okay, our next one is kind of a fun one. Uh, let me bring this up here. It's this card here. It says, don't grow up, it's a trap. And that comes from our stamp set, the lighthearted lines. I like these. They're really cute sentiments in there. Uh, we have, let's see, to a person who's still got it, but might not remember where they put it. <laughs> uh, happy birthday. Uh, when nothing goes right, go left. I'm sorry for our, what I said when I was hangry, hangry. And then don't grow up, it's a trap. Uh, thanks for lending an ear and keeping a straight face. Okay, then everything is figure outable, and then plot twist. I hate to break it to you, but you're stuck with me, friends forever. I kind of like that one too. So that's the stamp set we're using for the sentiment, but the stamp set we're using for the giraffe is comes from back on your feet. So, all right. And the paper that we're using is, um, it comes from the Pattern Party. And this is a hostess only purchase. It's in the back of your annual catalog with all the details. But if you have any questions, I could help you too. It's got, it's a large pack. I think it's 48 double sheeted, 12 by 12. But we're using this one here, this pattern. So let's go ahead and get started with our little giraffe back on your feet. All right, and I'll get all my bits and pieces out here without trying to do too much noise here. All right, so we're going to start out with our card base, which is the Granny Apple Green. And that it's just our standard size card, and that measures five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and it's scored in the middle at four and a fourth inches. So we're going to burnish that edge with our bone folder, and then we have a Bermuda Bay cardstock, which is going to be the mat behind that, and that measures. Uh, need to get my instructions here. I forgot them. Yes, that measures. Four and eighth inches by five and three eighths inches. We're not going to glue that to the card yet because we're going to maybe have to do some trimming here. Um, and then our designer series paper measures four inches by five and a fourth inches. So we can glue that to our mat here. So let's do that. Place that on top of our mat. We're going to leave a small edge going around. Okay, so there we have that. And next, we're going to take a strip of our Bermuda Bay, and that measures 
one and an eighth inches by four and an eighth inches. And then we have another piece of basic white which measures one inch by four inches. And we're going to stamp our sentiment onto that one. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just using our black memento ink. Don't curl up, it's a trap. <laughs> and we're going to place that to the left of our white strip here because our giraffe is going to sit on the right side of that. That looks pretty good, pretty straight. So we're going to go ahead and glue that. I'll just set that aside. I won't put the lid on it yet. Um, I may be needing a new bottle of glue here pretty soon. I've got to do a little shaking of it. So I'm going to put this up to the edge on the left side because we're going to trim off a little bit on the right side. I like to make it a little bit longer just in case. I'd rather have it too long than too short. So make sure our hearts are going right side. And we're going to glue that down and then I'll trim off the excess of our Bermuda Bay. And right about there is good. Alright, and then we can turn it over and we can trim off that excess. Okay. There's somebody shooting out there. into my fingers. There we go. So there's our front of our card. And I'm also going to put our ribbon across the one corner here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my stamp and seal to place that down. And I think I'll run a little bit more over there. And this is our open weave ribbon. It's our pale papaya. It's very pretty and it's easy to make bows with and everything is real workable. Okay, so we're just going to put that across the corner. Oopsie. Let me tighten this up a little bit. It's going to bother me. And now we can glue that to the front of our card. And I think I'm going to trim some of this ribbon off. I've got quite a bit there. And we'll just use our liquid glue again. Make sure my cards are going the right direction. We'll just place that on the front of our card. Leaving a small border going around all sides. And I like the liquid glue because you've got time to reposition it if you need to. Which usually I do. And get it to stick down. There we go. Alright, so we're going to set that aside for a moment. And we've got a little bow that needs to go on there, but we're going to do that last. I'm going to go ahead and stamp our giraffe. Got a piece of scrap basic white here. And we're going to stamp our giraffe. Okay, and then we're going to put him on our scrap basic white. Alright. And I'm going to let that dry just a moment. So we're going to be using our blends. I don't want it smearing, so I'll just kind of pick up here a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and put our bowl while well, we're waiting for that to dry just a tiny bit. And I've got some, these are the mini glue dots that come in our paper pumpkins. Uh, so I'm kind of using up mine, to, and I'm going to take my pokey end here, and I'm going to pop them off. Oops, I've got something on there. 
And we're going to place our bow right up on top of that ribbon. I think I might use two just to make sure it's good and secure. And we just pop off the backings of those glue dots. And I've already tied the bow ahead of time. So let me kind of arrange it a little bit here. Now well, that one wants to turn under. Okay, and then we're going to kind of pop that up a little bit. Let me trim this other one. It's kind of long. Alright. And I got kind of short, so let's shorten this one to match it. Alright, so here's our little bow on the top of our ribbon. So that should have gave our giraffe time to dry a little bit. So let's bring our blends in here. And I'm going to be using the pale papaya, the light and the dark. And then I'm also going to use the light granny apple green to do the ground here that he's standing on. So um, I'll put some paper underneath here in case it bleeds through on my work surface here. We're going to start with the dark pale papaya. And we're going to color in his um, little spots and his hoofs. So... And we don't have a die for the giraffe, but he's fairly easy to fussy cut, so we'll do that after we color him. And do the spots on his legs here and his little hoofs. And I think I'm going to do a little darkening shade inside of his ears. I think I got them all. Um, well, I've got spots right there, I guess, that I missed. Oops, and one more right there. And make sure with your blends that you get them to click real tight because they will dry out on you. Uh, they are alcohol-based, so they will dry if you leave, don't get the cap on right. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I guess that's what you say when you learn the hard way. So I'm using the light pale papaya to color his body. And we're almost done here. How many have their Christmas tree up already? I'll probably put ours up the day after Thanksgiving is what I usually do. And I know some put it up before Thanksgiving. Okay, I've got the pale papaya done. So let's come back in with our granny apple green and we're going to color in that ground a little bit that he's standing on. And then we'll fussy cut it. Okay, just like so. I'm trying to get my comments to pop up there again. They kind of disappear. That's true, Diane, yeah. <laughs> you like the black sentiment? Yeah, I kind of do too. It kind of makes it stand out more, I think, so. Maybe it wasn't a mistake after all. Okay, so we're going to fussy cut our giraffe. And then we'll put him down on dimensionals. Oops. Get that out of 
out of the way. Get that out of the way. There we go. And when you're fussy cutting, you don't move the scissors, you move your paper. And we're almost there. Yeah, we went camping last week. Um, it went really well. It was pretty cold, but we were all bundled up by the fire outside, so... And it's never too cold to make homemade ice cream and stand around the fire eating ice cream while you're freezing to death. <laughs> so we did that Friday night, I guess, or last night. Um, but it was good. Um, it'll be our last one until the spring now, so... Let me bring my dimensionals in here. We're going to place him up on dimensionals. You haven't mastered it yet, Diane? It's not that bad. Um, I guess it kind of comes with practice. I was really awkward at first when I started doing it, but it seems like it's getting easier every time I do it. So I guess it's just one of those things that you just got to keep trying at maybe. And we're going to put a few dimensionals on this little boy because we want it to... Not sink. You can stand up there, right? And we're going to take your pick tool and pop those backings off. Oops, one more. There we go. And then we're going to place that on the side of our sentiment. And get them positioned there. Okay. And we've got some gems that we're going to be putting there to give it some bling. And I'm using the blue adhesive backed gems. Those can be found in our annual catalog also. I'm going to take your pick tool and I'm going to, whoops, I slammed down my work surface there, my ring. So I'm ready to break your wedding ring. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take, oh, I guess the smaller ones, and we're going to place three on the sentiment. And maybe another one right there. Okay, so here's our little guy. Don't grow up, it's a trap. So now we're going to do the inside of our card. And I've got our basic weight, which measures four inches by five and a fourth inches and I've got some strips of the designer series paper that matches the front side and those are one inch by five and a fourth inches and we're just going to put those on each side because our sentiment is so small um, I didn't want it to get lost in all that white space so we're going to kind of fill in a little bit of that make it smaller so let's go ahead and glue these down And I'm going to leave a small edge. Whoops, make sure you've got them going the right direction. A small edge on the one side. And place that down. And we'll do the same on the other side. I might be going over a little bit today. I have one more card. Uh, it's a Christmas card. Um, if you don't mind sticking around, I, I'll go ahead and do it. Otherwise, I'll just schedule it for another day. Uh, let me know if you're able to stay or if you want to um, stop after this one. And we're going to stamp our sentiment using the Black Memento ink. And this says, this is not good. And too much ink on there. I want to get some of that off. 
Yeah, that is too. I don't like how that's thinking up. I guess it's good. Okay, so we're going to put that in the center. All right, I was afraid I had too much ink on my stamp there, but it looks okay. And we're going to go ahead and put that on the inside of our card. And place that down, centered. I've got a black smudge right there. I need to get my ink eraser, I guess. Get rid of that. Alright, so here's our outside of our card. Don't grow up, it's a trap. And then it says, this is not good. It's K-N-O-T. <laughs> but I thought it's cute. And so let me bring up my comments and see. Okay, Diane, you said you can stick around? Okay, so I think I'll go ahead, and if anybody has to leave, they can go ahead and leave and then catch the replay to catch the last card. Because um, I would like to do it today. Um, I have everything ready for it. All right, let me set that aside. And let me show the card. It's kind of a fun fold. Um, which I love fun folds. Uh, there's so many different ones, so it goes like this. I'm making sure it gets in the camera right. And I got a delay on my iPad, so I'm waiting for it to catch up here. Alright, it didn't show all of it. Come on, iPad, you can catch up to me. I just want to make sure it's all on camera view. And it's not showing the whole thing. Uh, maybe sideways. I might be zoomed in a little bit too much. Goodness, there's a delay on that iPad. Yes, I like fun folds too, Diane. They are fun. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and get that started. Um, I think I've got everything cut out and everything, so it shouldn't take very long. It's just assembling. So we're using the poinsettia petals and the paper that we're using, designer series paper, is the Tidings of Christmas. Get my bits and pieces out here. I'm also going to be using the ornate layers dies, and I'm going to be using this one here, which is the front side of the card. And let me get everything out here. All right, get myself organized. Sometimes that's a chore in itself. All right, let me put my dimensionals over here. Make a little bit of room. I'm gonna dump everything out. Hopefully, I don't lose anything. And come on out of their little flower. Okay. Okay, so our card base is going to be. Uh, well, here's the. Also, the dies for the poinsettia dies, and you can get that as a bundle. It's in our annual catalog. Set those aside. So we're going to start out with our card base, which is um, well. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. The card base is the small um, four and a fourth inches by five and a half inches. And the designer series paper that we're using is this one, and that comes out of that Tidings of Christmas, and here's the back side of it, which is pretty too. We're going to use this side. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down to our card base. centered on our card front, our card base. Well, I'm having butter fingers here. What's going on? Fingers aren't cooperating with me. Behave. Well, let me start at this side then. Okay, that's pretty good. We're going to go with it. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff now that I have glue all over my fingers. Okay, so here's our card base. And then we've got our soft succulent cardstock, which measures 4 and 3 4 inches by 9 and 3 4 inches. And we're going to score that. So I'm going to bring my paper trimmer over here, which has the cutting blade and the score blade. And this can be found in my store also. And we're going to score it. Bring the arm out here. We're going to score it first at the three and three fourths inch, which is right here. Got something in my finger. <laughs> All right, three and three fourths. I'll get that cutting blade out of there so we don't cut it by mistake. Who's ever done that? Me. <laughs> And then we're going to score it again at six and a half inches, which is right here. And that's all the scoring we have to do. Just set that on our side. And we're just going to go ahead and fold those. It's going to be like an accordion fold, kind of, I guess. And bring our bone folder and burnish those edges. I'm going to do it again to make sure they're scored really good. Okay. So here we have our, this is our tri-fold part of it. Alright, so let's start decorating. We're going to start, we've already die cut our um, ornate layers die. We use this one. We already die cut that to save a little time. So we're going to glue that down to our card front of that. And get the glue goobers off of my glue. You want to make sure that you've gone going the right direction, so you want to open this way. And we're going to place that on the front. And this just barely fits on there. Um, it couldn't fit any better, so, like so. Alright, and... So we're going to start decorating first before we do any stamping. Well, let's go ahead and do our stamping and be done with that. We've got two layers of the basic white, which is going to be our inside of our card. And these are three by four and a half inches, and we need two of those. So we're going to go ahead and do our stamping before we attach them to the inside. And one's going to be May the Magic and wonder bloom this holiday. We're gonna, we're gonna use the cherry cobbler ink pad. And I'm going to bring my scrap paper over here. I'm gonna get a clean one. This is kind of dirty. I uh, thought I had a cleaner one. Here we go. And going to stamp our sentiment using the cherry cobbler. And we're just going to stamp that in the center of our first layer. And we'll set that aside because we're going to come back in and put some greenery. Oops, 
I'm stamping that one again. We don't want to do that one again. We want to do uh, this one. It says, warm wishes from our home to yours. And we're going to stamp that in the center also. It's noisy out there today. I don't know what that was. A plane or something. And we're going to come back in with our evening evergreen. And we're going to stamp some greenery. Which is this little guy. And the reason I got my scrap paper here is because I'm going to come off the edge here. Trying to keep my work surface a little bit clean. And I'm going to do three of those right there in the corner. And another one there. And we're going to do the same with this one. And we're going to do one at the bottom corner. And I should have been using my piercing mat underneath me for the photopolymer. Turn for me here. And we're going to put two at the upper corner. Okay. We can put our ink pads away. All right. A little ink on my fingers, but not too bad. All right. So now we're going to attach these to the inside of our card. So the one at the magic goes in the middle, and then this one at the bottom. I really like this fun fold. It's kind of elegant looking, I think. Uh, my upline, Kelly, was the one that showed this, and I fell in love with it, so I had to case it. But uh, I used a different stamp set and everything than what she did. I just used the same design. This one goes at the bottom. And we're just leaving a small border going around. Alright. I don't know if you can see it on camera very well. Okay, so let's start decorating the front of our card. And I think I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the cards. So we're going to put glue on the back side here. And then I'll decorate it. Um, that down and uh, do I have that going the right direction? There, I think I like it that way better. So we're going to place that in the center of our card front, our card base. And I'm going to bring it back in here and press it down. If you didn't want to use the liquid glue or whatever, you could also use tear and tape to attach it. So whatever your choice adhesive would be uh, works just fine. I'm trying to get a little better edge on there. Alright, so now we're going to decorate it. And I've already die cut some poinsettias. And I did um, two petals each on each flower. And then the smaller one in the center. So Make sure I've got everything here. I didn't lose anything. Okay, and then some leaves. These are cut with the evening evergreen, and the poinsettias are cut out of um, cherry cobbler. So we're just going to go ahead and attach these together. And that die has different size poinsettias. I think this is probably the smallest. Yeah, yeah. Place it on top of that one. Just kind of straddle the petals. I guess that's a word for it. <laughs> and same with the top smaller one. And then we have this little piece that cuts out too, and that's cut out of the soft succulent to go along with our fun fold base there. And we're just going to put a little glue in the center. Maybe, there we go. There, 
here. So first one. And then we'll do our other one the same way. Come here, petal. And same with that, we're going to straddle the petals. And this one there. Oh, that's fine, Amber. You can go back and watch the replay later today or when you get a chance. Um, yeah, I ought to be busy in the kitchen, but I haven't got there yet. This is more fun. <laughs> That's how I'll be spending my afternoon, I guess. Okay, so we've got the center part on our flower there. And I'm going to scrap or stamp our sentiment, which is Merry Christmas. In the center of that, we're going to kind of angle it a little bit. So we're using the Cherry Cobbler ink again, and we're going to use the Merry Christmas stamp. And we're going to place that in, at an angle, kind of line that up. Alright, that looks pretty good. Close that up, and I just stick my finger in the ink pad. Okay, so now we're going to take our um, poinsettias and we're going to place them on the upper left corner and the lower right corner. And I think I'll bring that down a little bit. There we go. And we'll do the bottom one. And I'll place that at the bottom corner. Alright, so here we have so far. So now we're going to place our leaves at each flower. Yeah, I'm going to need a new bottle of glue here pretty soon. This is Getting kind of low, I gotta keep shaking it. And I'm getting two leaves on each poinsettia. Poinsettia, poinsettia. I guess it depends on where you're at, how you pronounce that. I have kind of a mutt. Um, language because I've lived in Minnesota, then I lived in California, and now I'm in Arkansas, so I don't know what kind of accent I have. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay, I'm going to put this little guy right there, I think. Well, I don't like how that's sitting there. Alright, let's do that way. Okay, so here's the card front. We're going to add some bling to this little guy, which we're going to use. We're using the rhinestone basic gems, basic jewels, I should say. And I've already colored them using the, um, I think I used the pale papaya blending pen. Stampin' Blend. But I've already colored our rhinestones already, so um, I'm use up the rest of my sheet of this old one. And then some of the new sheet. So let's bring our Take Your Pick tool to get those off with. And I'm going to use the uh, larger for right in the center. Come back and put the smaller ones all around it. So we've got some here. And I think it takes uh, seven total, but I'm using six of the small ones and then one of the larger one in the middle. Okay. 
Let's just turn that it's in my way. Let me get a good view here. And take your pick tool really works good for this because it grabs hold of your rhinestones. And saves fumbling with the fingers. Where is that? I think it's underneath. There he is. He was underneath there hiding. And I think it took the sticky. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's still there. Uh, let's try this. Well, now where did it go? I've lost it. I don't know where it went. I know we've got more here. So let's do this. I think my rhinestones are misbehaving here a little bit. And the last one. Okay. So we'll set those aside. And to give it a little extra bling, I'm going to bring out our Wink of Stella. And I'm just making sure I've got down in my chamber. And we're going to bling it a little bit more. Mm, right there. And I'm not doing the, the whole leaf. I'm just kind of splashing a little bit on each leaf. A little bit just to give it that little extra bling. So I think that's good. Let me see if I forgot anything. Um, no, looks good to me. So here's our little fun fold. Uh, Merry Christmas. And then the inside says, May magic and wonder bloom the holiday. Warm wishes from our house, our home to yours. So if you don't have any Christmas cards done yet, here's a... A little sneak peek of an example that you could do. Very pretty. Thank you, Diane. Or, yeah, thank you, Diane. Yeah, I think I really like this fun fold. And, but let's not forget we can decorate our envelope, too. And how we do that, we just take a piece of our designer series paper that matches. And it's two and a half inches by six inches. And we're just going to glue that to our envelope flat and then we'll come back in and trim it off. Can't have any naked envelopes. Mm. Mm, just butt that right up against the seam of that envelope flap. Oopsie. Too far. Okay. And turn it over and press it and make sure. And then we'll come back in with our paper snips. And we just trim off that excess. Very easy to do. And it's so pretty. It decorates the envelopes a little bit. And you could also stamp uh, maybe a poinsettia on the front lower corner. Um, but we're just going to leave it as just doing the flap this time. See, like so. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so that didn't take so much extra time. Maybe like 20 minutes longer. So I appreciate you sticking around. And let me get our cards out here. And we'll show what we've done today. Um, and Amber, please go back and watch the replay. And anybody else that might have missed the beginning. Um... So there's our three cards for today. Uh, let me scooch over just a tiny, tiny bit to get these all in view. Okay. That looks pretty good. So I want to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Um, try not to eat too much. I know I probably will. Um, 
all those calories on these holidays are a killer for diets. <laughs> but I'm going to let you all go, and I'm glad you were able to come today. Uh, yeah, Diane, I think the favorite, too, is the cabin. I love that cabin stamp. It's got so much potential. Um, I need to work with it more. Um, maybe in the next few weeks. Okay, yeah, happy Thanksgiving, Diane. And everybody that was here, and anybody that's watching on the replay, too, happy Thanksgiving. Um, Y'all stay safe and stay healthy, and we'll be back next week, which will be, let me look at the date. I think it's December. Um, where did I put my calendar? There it is. Um, okay, yep, next Wednesday is December 1st. Wow. Hard to believe already. So I'll be back next Wednesday, December 1st, at 10 a.m. again. So uh, be sure that you can come join me. I don't know what I'm going to be working on. I might kind of go more to just doing Christmas cards, maybe. Um, being that we don't have our Christmas cards done yet. I'm talking about myself. So I'm going to let everybody go, and thank you for being here. Bye.